The Robert Morris women's basketball team entered this season with high expectations. In 2014, the Colonials won the NEC championship, receiving an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. 2015 ended in heartbreak, falling to St. Francis Brooklyn at home in the NEC championship game. With their dream of back-to-back -back championships dashed, that home court heartbreak stuck with the returning Colonials all season long. Adding to the pressure of the season was the looming retirement of 13-year head coach Sal Biscaglia, meaning associate head coach Charlie Biscaglia became the coach-in-waiting, poised to take the reins in the fall of 2016. I don't want the focus to be on me, like everybody tells me, you know, let's win a championship. But that's not, you know, your last season. That's not what's important. What's important is that this team wins a championship for them, not for Coach Sal. It's for them, just like any team. So I'm not taking from the perspective that this is going to be special to go out with a win. No matter what happens, it is for these young ladies who give everything they have to myself, to Coach B, every day in prayer. I want, I want them to win a championship just for them, not for me. The 2015-2016 season began with a bang for the Colonials, defeating West Virginia Wesleyan 124-59 in their first game of the season. But it wasn't always smooth sailing for the Colonials. We had a lot of hiccups during the year trying to find what we do best. Uh, and I think we found that, and I think we really came together. So I think you feel you know, a lot better about yourselves when you're on a little bit of a streak. And we do feel good about ourselves as far as how we've been playing, you know. No question about that. But the Colonials would have a tall test ahead of them. After defeating Sacred Heart in Fairfield, Connecticut, in a gym the Colonials hadn't won in since 2008, the Robert Morris women's basketball team would be seated against the best team in college basketball for the last three seasons, the Yukon Huskies. The Colonials were going to need all of the support they could get, and that's exactly what happened in their send-off to Connecticut. to see support from everybody of the university including my fellow athletes, faculty and the president's wife was there so it was awesome to see just how many people were willing to take time out of their day to say bye to us. Uh, he was really nice, he was, uh, I really liked the fact that everybody was there and a lot of people um, to support us, it really uh, helped us a lot to have all this support and it's always uh, really nice to see that you know we are, every, a lot of people are following us. Oh, 
Drop the food in the fish tank and all the fish come. <laughs> But the trip to Connecticut couldn't be all business for the team that became a family. It's definitely a unique experience. I'll get have to say the team, like having the support of these girls, even though they've only known me since what May, <laughs> a couple of months, but they really accepted me and uh, encouraged me, empowered me through different things I had to battle through through the season, and it's been a big help along with uh, my coaching staff. We um, be, even before I came here, there were already some international players. So like as I came in this team, it was already you know. The, the culture of the team was already different because we had a bunch of uh, international players and when we came together it's just a lot easier to uh, be a part of the team where you know everybody's from other countries because at the end of the day it's the only thing we have it's you know basketball pretty much when we get here at least so it was really easy to get to know the girls because everybody was in the same situation for me it was like more comfortable because like if I would be in a in a team that the main, I mean, the main language is gonna be English, but like everybody is from America, everybody the first language is English would be like more uncomfortable for me. Cause like, even though I've been like three years here, it's still like hard for me sometimes to like develop my English. And with like international people, I don't feel alone in that case. So if I pronounce wrong one word, everyone's gonna be like, oh, that's okay. Cause I did that too. So it feels like more comfy to be with people that their second language is English too, because we kind of understand each other when, even like we happen with people who has like the first language, we can like cut words sometimes, and when we're text too, they're like, oh, don't worry about it, they got you. So it's kind of like, that's why I really like about this team, because they don't judge you because you don't speak like perfect English. One of the main reasons why I wanted to come to Rob more specifically was the diversity on the team. I wanted to be able to have friends for for life, lifelong friends that were from all over the world and I, where I could travel there and just like have so many different cultures to experience and everything like that. To be honest, I caught like a little chill coming into UConn because it's the team I like, grew up watching. But then once I started practice, it was like any other gym. We've been in big arenas before. So it was like any other gym when you started practicing, same court. Uh, I think that this arena is really great. It's just the fact that we're in the NCAA tournament it just makes it even much more, much more of a special moment. So I'm just really excited to play on this court tomorrow. Um, honestly, it really is a blessing. We worked hard for this. And that's basically all I can say. We just worked hard. We, we know that this is where we want to go. We just worked preseason, during the season. In the summer, we just worked really hard for this. It's awesome. It's a beautiful gym. Um, we've, been, we've been in areas and arenas like that, so it's not that surprising. but. 
it's, it feels nice, it's a good atmosphere, I like it. The, I think the warm-up is going to be big, you know, seeing the, seeing the opposite team and stuff, it's going to be a little different, having some people in the stands. So. It's a little empty right now, so it's going to be a lot different tomorrow. They remind me of some of the teams we played in the old Big East. Uh, they, they don't necessarily um, shoot the ball as, as many times from as many crazy places as DePaul does, but they move. They move the people and they move the ball like DePaul does. They're disciplined like Villanova was when we played them all the time. Um, they, they really do get the most out of what they have. Um, they try to get you to play at their pace. Um, they really do a great job of capitalizing on whatever mistakes you make defensively. Um, and I'm, I'm always amazed when, I, when, when I'm in this situation because uh, I remember going to the NCAA tournament um, with a team just like Robert Mars, you know, 1988, 1989. You know, those years when you knew that we have to be smarter, which we were. We have to be a little bit tougher. We have to make sure that we get a great shot every time down the floor. And, and, um, and that's how they play. You know, they play with a, a real discipline that I think um, makes it makes it hard to play against because they make you kind of impatient. That's how I would describe it. You have to be patient because if you get impatient, they... So we're going to try to make them a little less disciplined, I hope. We're going to go out there, we're going to work hard, and we're going to try to play our game, not play their game. Um, we're just really excited and we really appreciate the opportunity, I mean, to play against the best team in the country right now. I mean, Coach House last year, it's been an extra motivation since day one for us. We just uh, wanted him to finish his coaching career on a positive note, and I feel like we did at some point, and we're going to play as hard as we can tomorrow and, you know, help him be happy and, you know, <laughs> I am. and we wish him <laughs> the best of luck for, you know, after his coaching career. Yeah, we're definitely not going to approach this game um, any different than any other game we played this season. If that's what the, co the coaches want us to do, then that's what we're going to do. The fact that um, it could be his last game um, definitely has, you know, a lot of, it gives us a lot of motivation, but um, I think we're ready and we'll go out there and we'll play, you know, as hard as we can like we always have and we'll do a little bit more for him to that tomorrow. I've heard the last game for now for, you know, weeks, months. You know, it's your last game, it's your last practice, it's your last film session. You know, going into the conference tournament, it's the last, this, last, that. I don't, you know, I don't think about that being as my last game. This is not for me. This is not about me. This is about those young ladies. And if we focus anything away from them, we're doing them an injustice. You know, it's Ashley Ravelli. She's played her four years. Slew Manalis. They play four years of game of their heart and soul to me and this team. And they come from all over the world. You know, and they, their parents trusted me and Coach B uh, and, you know, to take care of their daughters. You know, uh, the hardest thing for me is not going to be the winning or losing the game. It's going to, and it's not going to be you know, like every day in the, in the practice and the film session. The hardest thing, believe me, and I don't know how I'm going to react, uh, is the interaction I have with one of the, you know, we're, we're not the finest team in the land. Connecticut is the finest team in the land, in the universe. There's no question. But I, in my view, I have the finest student athletes in the universe. And that's what I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss the interaction on a daily basis with fine young ladies. Okay, that's what I was. And it's what's really even more difficult is that you know Ashley's going back to Italy, uh, Lou's going back to France. Okay, and uh, and Nikki will be back for one year, so I will see her. But eventually, she'll go back to Greece. So it's not like they're going to be in this this country. Uh, so thank God. And I don't do much of Facebook. I don't understand Facebook too much. Uh, I'm not. People say they have posts on Facebook. I want the hell you're talking about because I don't know how to even get the posts. But I have captured the messaging 
so I know how to message. So that's going to be the hardest thing, the daily interaction with the fine young ladies. Do I think they're the number one team in the country when it comes to student athletes. been through this time and time again. Some of you have been through this for four years. Some for three, some for two, some for one. You say, Coach, what are you talking about? We haven't been through this. We're going to be we're in the national tournament. We're playing the number one team, best team in the land, maybe in the world. We haven't done this before. No, we've done this before. We've come together before each game. Some of you with me for four years, as I mentioned, and we've done this. And we're going to do the same thing we always do. We're going to go over the lineup, we're going to know what they do, we're going to transfer it to the court, and we're going to give it everything we have, because that's what you should do every day of your life. Give everything you have. Everything you have. Because when you give everything you have, you have no regrets. No matter what the outcome, you have no regrets. That's what I want to have. Goals never have regrets. Have no fear. No fear. All right? They block a shot, they block it. Go after it again. Every possession. Mover. Very important. Sprint. Sprint. They've never seen the mover offense. I don't think anybody's ever run the mover against them. They might switch on it. They may not. But you sprint through those screens. No patient. No, no, no uh, pace yourself. Just sprint through them. I want them to come out of this game to the they were one of the hardest teams to guard because they constantly sprint. They constantly had to go off the of screens. Keys to the game. You know that thing I have in my office, an awarded thing. I've had it for years. It says believe. I've said this to you a hundred times. If you don't believe you get where you want to go, you'll never get there. You'll never get there. You gotta believe. You gotta believe. It's a foundation of so many things in life. You gotta believe that you can be the best. You gotta believe that you can hit that shot. You gotta believe that you can hit defense. You gotta believe that you brought and beat them. You gotta believe that. Probably tell me I was scared. What is it to be scared about? Between that square circle, you're in your own world. No one else exists except our bench and those people in that square circle. That's the only thing that exists in our world right now. So any other thoughts that you have, you have to get them away from yourself. Get them out of yourself. It's a beautiful thing if you can just focus and tunnel vision just on that. You can be so successful if you just focus your attention on the matter at hand and get all the other stuff that's around in your life, get it away from you for a while. We talk about being tough. Toughness is not someone that physically hurts somebody. That's not toughness, okay? Toughness is mental. Toughness is strength in our focus, in our heart, in our desire, in our spirit. That's what's tough. Tough is when you know things are down. That's toughness. That's a willingness. Toughness is a willingness. It's a willingness to do whatever it takes to get where you want to go. And that boxer is hitting you down in a figurative way, just shakes his or her head. It's like, my God, I'm giving them all the punches in the world to make this keep on getting back up. You're superhuman. That's toughness. That's toughness. Listen, the court is still 94 feet. The baskets are still 10 feet high. Yes, you're going against great players. Came to Robert Morris. Came to Robert Morris for what? To get an education, certainly. But when Coach B and I recruited you, we told you you will gain an experience like no other experience you can gain at some other school. If you give everything you have, you become a team player. We'll bring you to the promised land with your help. We'll do it together. Well, you, you get it. You're at the promised land. Basketball. You're here. You're at the water. You're here. You're experiencing something no one else really would experience. You're playing the number one team in the country. No one else today is playing the number one team in the country. Only you are. No one else is at UConn playing that. Only you are. And you are at the right to be here. 
you are me. So what are we going to do? We're going to go out there and say, hey, this is UConn. If this is all these people here, this is ESPN and all this. You know where my world is? My world is with you. That's what my world is right now. It's not with anybody else. It's with every one of you. I just ask you one thing. Stay together. Enjoy the experience. And make sure you kind of know what the devil themselves are. That they were in a war. All right? Let's go. I know a lot of coaches, a lot of my friends. I know guys that have been coaching longer than Sal. Um, that, you know, are still, you know, out there every day trying to get that first championship. That uh, If you, <laughs> this is the world that most people live in, okay? This is the world that Sal lives in. This is the world that most people live in. We live in a fantasy world here at UConn. You know, we've created a fantasy world. You know, there's original Disneyland in California, there's Disney World in Florida, and then there's UConn World. You know, they're fantasy places. They're not real world. So when I talked to Bruno the other day before the tournament, I said, hey, how you like your bracket? He ripped off all the teams he's going to have to play. He goes, we got this team, this team, this team, then we got uh, Baylor and then you, or then we got somebody and then you. He had it all lined up who he was going to play in the national championship game. That's the world that most people live in. And we're, we live in a fantasy world. So yeah, I could live in that world very, very easily if I had never lived in this one. Coming in together, I mean, for four years, I feel like I, I gave everything I had to Coach Sal and the rest of the coaching staff. Um, I'm just so proud of wearing this uniform. Um, I'm just, I'm just happy. It's been an extra motivation since day one to, you know, to come to play to the NCAA for him and for the seniors. We tried to do our best today. I know we didn't play our best game, but we gave it all and we fought till the last second. And I'm so proud of this team. I always think life's lessons are more important. You know, UConn's a great team. They beat our butt, especially in the first quarter. But I just hope I, they reflect on the fight. You know, the, the fight, and that's what we personified in that fourth quarter. We could have just, I don't, I know they didn't have Stewart in the game. I know they have some people, but they still had UConn players in the game. All right? And we executed plays. I don't know if you saw, we, we ran our back door play. Or we called a certain thing, and right up a timeout, we, Coach B said, let's run the back door play. We ran it. And then we ran another play that we have. And they executed, we ran, we called Virginia. And, and it, you know, we hit the shot. And yet we were down by 40, 50 points. And we're still fighting. So that's what I want to relate to them. That's why I told them, always fight. You know, there's a lot of obstacles in life, no matter what. It could be race, it could be religion, it could be whatever it could be. And I tell them, don't let anybody get in your way just because you're a female. Okay, just because you're a female. Don't let anybody get away. Knock those walls down. Jump over them. Don't be the vice president. Be the president. Don't be com assistant commissioner. Be the commissioner. And that's what I want to teach them. And I hope in life they'll go on and, and, and hear what I said and never let anybody treat them as second class. Never. Oh, wow. All right, let's start with Lou. Lou has such a quiet spirit, so she teaches me the game of finesse. We always be patient. That's why I love working out with her, because I have such an aggression for the game, and Lou is more subtle. She's more patient, and that really teaches me how to play more controlled and more fundamental. And Ash has this very, very, very enticeful drive. Like she's very, very high spirited and when she wants something she goes to get it. So you see the passion in her eyes and I love that. Leah, she's very experienced. She's a uh, fifth year, so she definitely teaches me I think more of the logistics of the game, if that's a word. Uh, you know, that's the way of putting it. Um, and lastly, Randy. Wow. She teaches me to be more content. Especially off the court. She showed me definitely how to be an individual and more so than just a player. Because basketball is what we do, it's not who we are. And Randy definitely depicts that with her willingness to always get better and her willingness to always be basically an all-around person. So the, the senior class this year has definitely impacted me in a variety of ways. Um, I'm planning on getting a master at home probably. Um, I have two options and if I might keep playing basketball, I would like to, especially after this year. Um, it was tough when I had my ACLs, I was like, well, I'm probably going to you know, finish my career and then maybe uh, just go to school <laughs> and find a job, an actual job. But after this year, I just had so much fun on the court that uh, 
it would be too bad to, you know, just give up. So I'm going to try to play ball back home and get a master. Um, it's a little bit up in the air, but it's either that or um, I would like to start coaching as well. Um, so I'm starting med school in July. <laughs> it's definitely going to be a new chapter of my life. I'm just really looking forward to being able to help interact with people in a totally different light.